breakout groups were informative and you had some good conversation, maybe learned a few new things. Um, the, what we're going to do now is we're going to talk about um, accessing federal funds to get high tech ideas to market. And I'm, you know, I'm Brian Walsh with the Center for Technology Commercialization, as I mentioned before. And we are a, a state funded organization. So we're part of the UW System Institute for Business and Entrepreneurship. And we have services at no cost um, to Wisconsin companies. So even though we're part of UW System, we serve small businesses across the state, um, all, all types of small businesses. And we, we, our sweet spot is assistance to early stage emerging technology businesses. And we've supported clients as in, in acquiring hundreds of millions of, of dollars in federal funding. And that's, that's what we're gonna focus on today. Um, so our team, so we have five people on our team and up in the top right is Bono Rector and Margaret's in the bottom left. Um, so you know Margaret from this, from this call. And then Todd, Idella, and myself, we're all, um, we do consulting as well as provide uh, in startup and pro other programming. And a couple, two of us are in Milwaukee area and three are in Milwaukee, but again, we serve the entire state. And so let's, let's kind of get started on this. So what, um, you know, so basically what do these people have in common? And you, they've basically performed research at Milwaukee area institutions and their innovations led them to found Milwaukee area startups. And, and uh, another thing that they have common is that together these three companies have received almost $2 million in federal SBIR, STTR seed funding. And that's, that'll be the subject. We'll get into more details about that in the next slide, starting with the next slide. Um, what, just keep in mind that we don't have a ton of time today. So my overall goal is to give you an overview of the SBIR program. And as I go through it, you're gonna see there's a lot of bit of, there's a lot of variability, there's a lot of nuance. And what I hope by the end of the, the presentation is that you have, a, you have a, a good background and maybe have, you can get a, idea of you if you might be a match and that that it will cause you to reach out to us at the CTC for uh, you know a, a, a starting phone call. Um, so let's talk about some of the basics here. So SBIR and STTR, you're going to hear me use from here on in, I'll just say SBIR unless I'm trying to make a, intentionally trying to make a distinction. But SBIR stands for Small Business Innovation Research, and STTR stands for Small Business Technology Transfer. And so these are, um, these are programs um, funded by the SBA, and the idea is that they, they're, they're to stimulate technological innovation, um, increase private sector commercialization, um, really fill a gap for getting early stage um, feasibility proven, R&D done, to fill in the gap between that idea and a place where either the company can commercialize or they can uh, they can attract can attract um, investors, and there are eleven different agencies that participate. And uh, the, the, their logos are on the left, but the next slide actually will list them. It'll be easier to see what those agencies are. Um, about five thousand awards per year to small businesses. And this is non-dilutive, so basically it, they're not taking equity in your company. These are in the forms of grants or contracts. The company re retains its intellectual property rights. And then, you know, again, I talked about the purpose is really to stimulate, to stimulate innovation. And let's get, uh, talk about these 11 agencies. So here are the list of the 11 agencies. So they're, you know, they're agencies you, vote, you, you know and love, Department of Defense, National Science Foundation, um, health and human services, a big more, the, the majority of their um, funding is going to the National Institutes of Health. But you can see the list of, of um, agencies here. And what I've done here is in blue, these are agencies that participate um, in the STTR program. All of the agencies, all 11, per, uh, per, um, all of the 11 per participate in SBIR but only five, the five biggest agencies participate in STTR. And again, I'm gonna be uh, coming up, I'll talk a little bit more about those, those distinctions. Um, just so you can get a, a, an idea, the SBIR program 
um, funds last year funded 3.28 billion, or I guess 2019 funded 3.28 billion in research projects and STTR projects for 453 million. So really together about $3.7 billion went from these federal agencies. And it, this money is, is mandated. They have to set aside a percentage of their extramural research budget. And um, so uh, this is thus the program. The, the success rate uh, overall in obtaining these grants contracts is about 15 to 18%. Uh, in Wisconsin, we're at about 24%, so we're higher than the average. And um, and I'll talk a little bit more about CT, CTC's success rates success rates later. Um, talk about a few, a little bit about eligibility here, and then I'm going to pick it up a little bit later as well. And basically, the the applicant has to be a small business, so it can't come from the an academic institution. It has to come from a small business. And it has to be organized for profit, and there's a variety of ways to organize for profit. Um, they don't; they're not prescriptive about a specific specific um, structure. It has to be located in the in the U.S., including its affiliates. The research has to be done in the U.S. 500 or fewer employees. Um, this includes if it's you know if you're if the, if uh, there are other um, affiliates in other countries or other other affiliates, I'm sorry, not in other countries, but other um, other branches, it has to be less than 500 employees in total. And it has to be more than 50% owned and controlled by um, U.S. citizens or permanent resident aliens uh, and domestic business concerns. It can be, um, it can be owned by VCs or hedge funds, but it has to be less than 50% in some cases. And the types of project, you know, broadly, the types of projects that they're looking for, the SBIR, and there's a lot of variability here. And you'll hear me say that a lot. There's a lot of variability, and that's, uh, you know, that's one of the reasons that we at the CTC are here. Um, overall, they're looking for pro um, projects that are, uh, have a high level of significance and that there's a high degree of technical risk. So... If you say that, yeah, I have this idea and I, I already know it's going to work and it's proven to do this, um, it's probably not going to pass the technical risk, the technical risk hurdle. And so they're, they're, you know, it's really early stage ideas. They're not looking for things like um, scale up to production, for example. So there's scale up for when there's still more research, but then there's scale up and, and you're, all you need to do is get it in a bigger vessel and um, not necessarily something like that. Um, not, not things like consumer goods. It's not meant to fund equipment and facilities. So it's really this early stage emphasis on innovation um, is important to both programs. And this next slide, I know it's fuzzy. Um, this is just kind of to give you an idea of how different agencies sort of their overarching descriptions of what technical is or what innovative is or what technical risk is. And so Department of Defense is DOD, Department of Energy in the middle, and the National Science Foundation. But basically, they just have different phrasing for what technical merit is, um, you know, what strengths they're looking for. The NSF, for example, is looking for something that encompasses the potential to advance knowledge. So there's sort of these higher level um, overarching um, criterion. And when you get this funding, it's generally a three-phase process. And you know, there are exceptions here as well, but generally it's three phases. And phase one is about feasibility, proving the concept. You know, on average, it's six months to a year project. Um, on average, it's maybe $150,000. Phase two is if you're successful in phase one, generally, then you can apply for phase two. And if you're funded, you might, might develop a prototype or you're advancing what, it, what you've done in phase one to the next step toward commercialization. And this might are likely to be 24 month projects uh, with about a million dollars in funding. And then phase three is no, no government funding at all. It's basically you're out and you're out doing commercialization. Maybe you're getting, you're getting um, investment capital or you're, you're getting sales of your own or some other, some other way of getting money, but, but it's not part of the federal program. 
And again, there are, are exceptions in this. And uh, the next slide is basically showing you that there are even, even those averages that I talked about in the last slide, really I put down here four different agencies and what their quote unquote maximum maxima are for, for funding. And you can see even just look at phase that phase one column, the DOE is 250,000, National Institutes of Health is 256. So even down in the Department of Defense, Within, within the Department of Defense, three different components have different ways of doing things and different amounts that they fund. And National Institute, Institutes of Health is a, an example of where there's a lot of variability. And it really can depend on the type of project. You know, some, some projects you can envision projects related to healthcare and pharmaceuticals, drug development. They have, they have a long horizon and um, clinical trials can be, you know, can be more are more expensive than other types of experiments. And, and so they do have higher, they, you, you can get higher caps on things. And for example, I saw um, Alzheimer's disease, which is, a, which is a, a, an area of a, spe a special interest that phase one budgets can be up to 500,000, phase, phase two budgets can be up to two and a half million. So the message here is not to memorize this, but just know that there's, there's variability here. And kind of bringing it back to um, our the picture of the the three founders at the beginning, this slide is showing um, a company called Conovate, and the founders have a history with UWM, and they have a, a lithium ion material a, a material for lithium -ion, lithium ion batteries that makes them better, they have faster charging times, safer batteries, and the reason I put this slide as up as well to introduce them but also to, to kind of think back on some of what we just talked about. So you can see here, um, I don't know if you can see my cursor or not, but up at the top on the right there, the, 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 you, the, the title of their project is up there. You can see that they, they got a Department of, Department of Energy phase one grant and in green, it was $155,000 in 2018. They went on to get a phase two from the Department of Energy um, for more than a million dollars in 2019. And you can see it even has the really the same title for the project. And then they also in 2019 have a National Science Foundation project, um, phase one for $225,000. So you, what I'm showing, you know, what I wanted to show here is um, companies can, don't have to stick with a specific agency. If, if, if their agency is interested in their kind of project, it, it can be go across multiple agencies. You can't get funded for the same exact project um, twice, but you can, um, they can put together a strategy that helps them get things done in pieces from, um, from funding from different agencies. Um, so, here I'll differ, I'll do a little talking about SBIR versus STTR, some of the differentiators. And we talked already that five of the 11 agencies, only five of the 11 agencies actually um, fund STTR projects. But let's talk about some of the other differences here. So if you look at the, on the left, in the, on the bar on the left, this is for SBIR, Small Business, Small Business Innovation Research. And really with that kind of project, the small business can do all the work if it wants to, but it has to do at least two thirds of the work. And it can subcontract out up to one third of the work on a, on a phase one project. So um, SBIR really the, the small business could do it all if they want, but they, they have the flexibility to subcontract a third of it. For STTR, small business technology transfer, the the small business has to subcontract out 30% of the work to a nonprofit research institution. And the company has to do at least 40% of the, of the R&D work. And so that leaves this kind of middle portion shown on the bar graph that, that's flexible. So the company could do up to 60% of the work or they could subcontract more to the research institution or they could subcontract to someone else. So this is a this is a major distinction, uh, one of the major distinctions, and then another distinction is as principal investigator employment, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute here. Um, so kind of going back to our Conovate example, 
the uh, this is kind of the same slide I had up before, but I circled I circled that they they actually mixed up mixed it up between SBIR and STTR as well. So the DOE, the Department of Energy projects, were STTR, and the National Science Foundation project was an SBIR. And um, let's go one more here. Um, the uh, other two founders that I showed at the very beginning. Uh, ascending hearing and rapid radicals. Uh, ascending hearing has ties to medical college and uh, UWM and rapid radicals to Marquette. And, and these two organizations, um, these two businesses basically got STTR funding. And one is an NIH phase one grant and the other one is a National Science Foundation phase one grant. So it, in the case of the three companies that I'm highlighting here, we have several STTRs and one SBIR. And this is sort of a teaser for our next session, basically. We, in session three of this series next month, we're gonna have these founders as well as two other founders from Milwaukee area companies um, as panelists. And I'll, I'll mention that a little bit more, but really the focus will be on, you know, how did they make that STTR versus SBIR decision? What, what, you know, what went into their thinking and, and other things beyond that. And so who is the principal investigator? Uh, so uh, in this, there's, there could be variability here, but generally it's the key individual um, designated to the project. Um, they don't have to have a PhD or other high level degree, but they have to be knowledgeable in the technical aspects or at least um, knowledgeable enough to be communicating with the program director and be capable of leading the research effort. Um, Non-U.S. citizens are eligible if they're legally empowered to work in, in the United States. So um, I'll give an example next from the Department of Energy. And again, um, you know, keep in mind there's some variability here. So for this Department of Energy um, example, for an SBIR, the uh, primary employment, employment must be with the business at the time of the award and it can't be any less than 20 hours per week. So that's, you know, that's 50% if you're talking about a 40 hour week, work week. And it can't, they can't be working somewhere else more than 19 hours per week. And NSF is, is similar, I think it's 19 and 0.56 or something like that. But the idea is that, that someone can't be working full time somewhere else and be, um, be doing this project. For STTR, they can be at the small business or at a research institution. And in, in five or in four of the five SBIR, STTR um, agencies, NSF is different than the other than the other four. And there's also, um, in addition to the primary employment, there's also a time devoted to project requirement for um, for these. In this case, for for um, Department of Energy, it's a certain number, it's three hours per week for the duration of the project. And I have an example there where over 39 weeks, it's 117 hours. Others have different time commitments, but the idea is, okay, you maybe you're employed by the company, but you also need to, need to be devoting some time to this project. Um, so those are, um, those are some distinctions. So hopefully, you know, where I'm getting you to now is, is the point where you've got some general background and you're, you're you know, you're, is this a fit for me? Maybe, maybe not. Um, but you're, you're at least to that point. Um, and really what kind of where we would go next with this is kind of is to go through some different criteria to help funnel it down further and, and determine match and get more specific. And I, I will, uh, so this slide here basically kind of shows the process. So you're, you know, the next kind of part of the process. You're gonna find a solicitation. You're going to prepare a proposal and submit it um, for a phase one and two awards. And then off on the front of the arrow is the phase three that I mentioned is not, is not something that's part of the federal funding. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about these three boxes on the left in the next few slides, basically on, on how CTC can help you, but it also will tell you kind of what, what the process is, is like, or at least get introduce you to that a little bit. And so you know, starting, there's sort of a, a, an awareness that all these different agencies have different submission windows, different uh, windows for, for where they put out solicitations and are looking, are openly looking for people to um, send in proposals and, and deadlines as well. 
And so um, yeah, I put at the top, this, this chart alone kind of shows you there's, there's a lot to learn about different windows and, dead, and um, deadlines. And at the top, I sort of I put out a few of the, the you know, big agencies and NIH, for example, and their omnibus um, announcements are January, April, and September. DOD has three times a year. DOE, February, October, and, and NSF has quarterly windows that are a little different from what everyone else does. Um, so there's sort of this awareness of, of um, submission windows and when is a good time to be looking for topics. And that kind of brings us to the next point is, is really you, the, uh, when we first talk with people, we learn a little bit about their ideas and we try to think about which of the federal agencies might be good matches, which, which um, where there's alignment with the topic that the, of the project. And then you get down a little more specific. You can go to each of those agencies' websites and do searches and, and see um, what kind of topics they're interested in this particular solicitation. Um, and there, some, are, some will have different program areas with subtopics. Some, you know, there's a, 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 it gets very specific and it changes, um, it changes from solicitation to solicitation for the most part. So that's a, you know, a step in the process. Um, not the, another step, so once you find a topic match, once you uh, you're, and are aware that it's, there's a solicitation that it, you're matching and that you're shooting for a deadline, um, there is a point where we, the CTC offers microgrants for helping you hire a service provider to help you write a, write a, a proposal with a higher level, hopefully with a higher level, of, a higher chance of success. And so we have $4,500 microgrants um, that are available for the technical side and for the, the business and commercialization plan needs of, of, those, um, of those proposals. And also to the, to the point of preparing the proposal, we can help do draft and, and review, or we can review your drafts. So um, we will do that ad hoc. So if, you, you're, if you're kind of working on something and just want somebody to check it out, we can do that. We um, also will run for more formal pre-submission panel reviews for NIH and NSF several times a year. So it's, a, it's good to, um, to get in touch with us or stay in touch with us to know when those are coming out. And one other thing I'll talk about in terms of, of helping prepare a, um, helping prepare a, pro a proposal is we do have a program that's uh, an immersion sort of program to, for the, for some key parts of proposal writing or, or a better understanding of what's needed. And it's called SBIR, SBIR Ready, and I know some of you are familiar with it. But this year we're doing it a little different. We have a focus on the Department of Defense um, because we, we realize that um, Wisconsin really isn't getting its share of money from the Department of Defense for SBIR. So we're giving that a shot, and that's actually coming up and uh, letters of intent are coming up in February 11th with uh, these four sessions, four plus sessions starting in, in March. And really the idea here is to um, help establish companies ideate and develop a new funding pitch for the DOD to you know, basically help increase the chance of success. So um, if you have something that might be DOD compatible, um, you know, reach out to us. And then finally, um, I'm gonna talk, when you, get, when you get to that phase one and phase two award, um, CTC does work with, does have matching funds from the WEDC to do programming. And so phase one, if you get a phase one award, you can apply for an SBIR advance, um, our SBIR advanced phase one program. And that program takes you through lean startup, just uh, like Brian Thompson talked about in the last session, lean launch, lean startup, programming, customer discovery process, learn basically to understand the customer better, understand your market, and um, that will take you through it. And with the goal of helping you prepare a successful commercialization plan for a phase two proposal. So not only can you learn about your business and your customer in general, but we have tried to, we focus that on helping you get a successful phase two commercialization, hopefully. And our success rate in going from that phase one SBIR advance to someone actually receiving their 
phase two funding is, was 70% in, in 2019. So we have a good, good track record. And then phase two, SBIR advanced phase two is now you've gotten phase two funding. You're at a different, different spot in your, uh, your journey. And this is really about preparing you for investor readiness and getting you even closer to, um, to getting sales yourselves or, yourself or attracting investment capital. And so those matching, the matching for that is up to $100,000 per, per year for, and it can be up to two years. And so um, kind of back to this, um, back to this chart is, you know, again, on the left solicitation, we can help, we can help with the preparation and proposal um, submission, and we can help after you receive awards to, um, to improve your chances of success. And final comment here is it's never too early to start the conversation. And I will say, uh, you know, kind of, if you're wondering if you're a typical possible client, here are some client characteristics. Generally, it's people come to us very early. Um, they have a technology-based idea. They might, they might not know anything about SBIR. They, they know there's more work to be done in terms of proving feasibility. They might not have a company yet. So the point here is, um, you know, Start, start the conversation and we can kind of um, work you through that, that process. Um, and here you can see some, some data about our track record. And um, yeah, that brings us to the end. We're, yeah, we've got a few minutes for questions. If anyone has any, um, I'm gonna stop sharing the screen for a moment and um, so we can look at the chat box. Well, I can see it better anyway. <laughs> Okay. Uh, so there's a question here about, um, and I might call on Todd, you know, my colleague Todd to help me with this, this question. Would a B corporation be eligible for a grant? And so a, a B corporation is more of a, like a social enterprise type corporation. Um, I, it, it's a for-profit corporation, so correct me if I'm wrong, but um, I, Oh, yeah, so Margaret says yes. Okay, good. <laughs> um, any other questions? And feel free to, if you, um, feel free to put it in the chat or, okay, let's see. Right, I put it in the chat, but <clears throat> I, I saw the 75,000 match for phase one, which is awesome. We did that. What about the phase two match of 100K per year? Is that uh, what's that process? Is the success rate high? Um, yeah, so that process, so at, and, and that we're just, we just finished up applications for a, a phase two right now. So you basically, you have to have a phase two, you have to have your phase two funding. Um, you, um, you can apply, uh, so it, it, it um, it's up to a hundred thousand dollars per year. The, the, Success rate of getting funded. I, you know, I don't know, if, um, Todd or Margaret, if you have. Yeah, I can. I can chime in here. So, are you asking about what's if you if you apply to us for the phase two match? What's the success rate for your Correct, application? Yeah. So, so say yeah. we already have a phase two and we want the extra hundred. Yeah, it, it historically it looks like our um, our success funding rates. For for the applicants is about forty percent or so. Okay. Thanks. Um, and the uh, I see a question here about the application process for the for micro grant work. So a typical scenario is um, you schedule a call with a, a counselor from CTC. We talk to you to learn about your project, and we talk to you about you know possible agency matches and 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 possible topic matches. And a typical, you know, typically next is what we encourage you to do or is, is reach out to the program manager for that particular topic at that particular agency. And we have, a, we have an executive summary template or if it's the National Science Foundation, they have a project pitch template. And we, we ask that you get in touch with that program manager to see if they think that you're a match as well. So there's sort of that preliminary work to, to um, see that you are a good match for a particular topic. And 
at generally at that point is a good time to apply for uh, apply for the micro grant. And so let's say you are applying for a, you know a phase one for the first time. We've we've had that conversation. You've done a National Science Foundation project pitch, and they say, yeah, we invite you to submit a full proposal. Then we have a micro grant application on the CTC website, and um, we'll you know, you fill that in. We will um, just, you know we'll we'll review it, and if it's approved, then you can um, hire a, a service provider to help you write that proposal. And on the CTC website, we have uh, a dozen vetted service providers that are experienced in writing SBIRs. And there's, uh, you know, there's some requirements where you're getting quotes from them, et cetera. But generally, that's up, up to $4,500 is available. And it's, and it's doled out in two tranches, kind of one at the very beginning of, of $1,500 and another about $3,000 upon submission of deliverables and, and actually submitting the proposal. Does that help? Does that answer that? Well, yeah, so I would actually just follow up. Um, so I asked the original question. Um, so we're at a point where we submitted a phase one SBIR and are revising it. Um, so could the funds be used to help us better tailor the, um, the, the proposal to address the reviewers concerns? Um, yeah, I, I, so I don't know, Todd, have we done them with revi revisions? Uh, usually it's kind of on the front end. Yeah, we certainly have done them on revisions, but uh, the the amount of work that you need to have a service provider do for a revision is typically a little on the low side because you did all you did most of the work up front. Um, and so while we certainly would be able to let you use the 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 your company is typically only allowed one micro grant for the duration of the company. And if you don't use the full $4,500, let's say you have to do a resubmission and you incur costs of like $1,000 or $1,500 from the, from the service provider because most of the work is done, you basically burned your one chance of, of using the micro grant. Uh, there is some nuance. Sometimes we were able to do some th things, but it, it, you might get a bigger bang for your buck if you, if you use a service provider for a brand new, uh, never been used before. Uh, or never been submitted before application. Or if okay, think, got it. Or, or if you think you might need help with phase two. Um, yeah. And, yeah, and so, yeah, that's actually a good point, Brian. I, I think, you know, we can certainly help you with a revision. Uh, that, that you know, we, we help all the time. So if you want to not burn your one shot for the micro grant on a resubmission because you won't get the biggest bang for your buck, it's, it, it might be strategic for you just to save that one chance and use it when you're submitting your phase two. Okay, got it. Thank you. Uh, so did we, uh, I see there's a one, and I know we're at the end of our time here. I see there's kind of one question here is, what are the trends of applicants, projects, ideas that do receive, do receive an SBIR, STTR versus not an STT, SBIR, STTR. And, and so that kind of goes back to that, um, back to that, that slide about significance and technical risk are kind of the main, are the main things. But there's also, when you're, when you're to the point of, you know, specifically looking at your proposal, there are the uh, evaluation criteria could be, um, you know, they'll look at the team and the environment, for example, is, is this, uh, is this a team that can um, that they think that can execute the project and take it take it to the to commercialization, take it to market? Um, they'll look at um, um, the overall significance again. Um, so those those types of things um, are factored in. Okay. Any other questions before we wrap things up? I'm going to just. Put up one more slide here to, to tee us up for next um, for next week or next month. I'm sorry. Okay, so the next session is session three is February 11th, 
And it's a founders panel on how did I get here? And what we've done is we've, um, we've been able to get um, founders from each of the five academic institutions that are participating here to join on in a panel. And the idea is, um, you know, again, maybe how did they make that SBIR, STTR decision? How did they make the decision to actually form a business at all? What, uh, you know, what's it like? What's life like for them for balancing their research and their, their business responsibilities? And this is actually going to be led by, um, by Sheila Schindler Ivins from Marquette. And Sheila is someone, um, Kalba, correct me if I'm wrong, but at least a few months ago, Sheila is someone who is trying to make this decision right now. And so we thought it would be interesting to have her be the one asking the questions. Um, and uh, hopefully it'll, it'll enlighten, you know, answer some of the questions that you might have about, uh, you know, if you're thinking about doing the same thing going forward. So uh, um, be sure to sign up and, and uh, join us for this next panel. Any, uh, Jessica, Kalpa, anyone else? Any, anyone else have anything to add before we say goodbye? Okay, well, with, with that, um, you know, thank you everybody for joining us. Thank you for, uh, for the, you know, the group for doing the breakout sessions um, and uh, hopefully we'll see you next time. See you later. Thank you. Thank you.